Glory to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters, well, brothers, <laughs> today we celebrate this feast of the meeting of Christ in the temple. And we often don't think of it as being one of those Sundays leading up to the beginning of Great Lent. And yet, truly it is, because today it's a feast of humility. But every feast of our Lord Jesus Christ is a feast of meekness and humility. Today, the God who created the heavens and the earth, the one who appeared in the Old Testament, the one who created from the very beginning all that God willed to be created, the God who spoke to Noah, who spoke to Moses on the Mount of Sinai, the God who called Abraham forth out of the land of the Chaldees, the God who standing upon the Mount of Sinai said, Ego Ibnio On, I am who I am, to the prophet Moses and sent him down to bring the Hebrews out of captivity and bondage. The God who appeared to the prophet Daniel as the Ancient of Days, the God who was seen by Isaiah and Ezekiel as the Lord of Hosts, seated in all the glory in which he was seen in these visions of the great prophets, surrounded by the angelic hosts, praised and glorified continuously, has come and enthroned himself in a manger in a cave, surrounded only by a few animals, in great humility and meekness. And today he's carried into the temple as if a helpless babe. But a great revelation is taking place as he's brought into the temple. We know the revelation given by the prophet Simeon and the prophet Asina. We know that they saw in him the Christ the Savior of the world. And yet to all worldly eyes he appears as an ordinary child brought by ordinary parents into the temple for an ordinary purification and service. In all things he appears in great meekness and humility. And yet ex ex expresses his authority over all the things of this world not with a lot of power, not as one who is going to reign as an earthly king or even as an earthly hierarch. And yet he is the great high priest and savior of our souls, the great high priest and savior of the world, a priest after the order of Melchizedek. Brothers and sisters, as we approach this great Lent, also to look at these feasts and these episodes from the life of the incarnate God on this earth and see what kind of meekness and humility, what kind of compassion, what kind of love, what kind of tenderness that he had for mankind and especially for those who are disenfranchised, who are cast aside, who are outcast and looked down upon by other people members of society. Even in the parable of the rich man and Lazarus, the blessed one was the lame, crippled, diseased man who sat at the gate begging. It was in his meekness and humility that he could turn his soul totally to God, for there was no place else to look except to God. And he, instantly hoping on the promise of those things which were to come, of the resurrection which would come in the future and of the rewards of those who had struggled in faith. Every Sunday leading up to the time of the beginning of Great Lent is a Sunday of humility. Sometimes when Pascha is late we commemorate the, the uh, Canaanite woman who came and cast herself at Jesus' feet and accepted what seemed to be a stern rebuke. And yet she demonstrated a faith that was born of pure, unselfish love. 
and Christ praised her faith and healed her daughter. Zacchaeus, who climbed up in a tree to see who Jesus was and became an apostle, paying back all the money that he owed, redistributing things, taking Christ not only into his home, but taking Christ into his heart. The publican and the Pharisee, the prodigal son who came and found the father's love was inextinguishable and ineffable. All of these things we see preparing ourselves for the great Lent. And take the feast of the meeting of Christ into the temple as one of those Sundays of preparation also. To see that incarnate in the flesh the living God fulfilled those things which were by the customs of the people so that he might in all things testify on behalf of mankind. As we say in the vigil service that he purified he was purified in the flesh to sanctify the flesh to attest to the sanctity of the flesh of mankind of us that our bodies as well as our souls are saved and redeemed the great revelation that takes place in this feast day in the nativity of Christ in the entry of Christ into Jerusalem where he enters humble and meek seated on a fowl, rather than in glory, the crucifixion itself, the resurrection which took place without trumpets and heralds, but in the still quietness of the night, so that those who truly believed could come and find and see and hear, and those who would curse him could not see and could not discover. Every feast of the Lord is a feast of humility and meekness. And this is a preparation, therefore, for our entry into Great Lent, one of those stepping forth toward Great Lent. Our Lord Jesus Christ is presented in the temple today. He will be presented to us, nailed to the cross, in not many days hence. And again presented to us, as the resurrected victorious Lord who reveals himself as truly the God of creation, as truly the one incarnate, as the Savior of the world. So today we rejoice in this feast as our Lord enters into the temple and in a way also enters into the more visible part of his ministry. He fulfilled the things of the law that he might fulfill the entire law for us and deliver us from the bondage of the law. He fulfilled death in the tomb, that Sabbath in the tomb, that he might tear up the power of death and deliver us from bondage to the fear of death. Today fulfills the law for us, tomorrow fulfills the resurrection for us. Let us therefore rejoice in our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, the Ancient of Days, the Lord of Hosts, the one who said, I am that I am, the living one who sees me at the well north of Abraham, the one who shaped all that exists out of the dust of the earth and the, and the waters of the sea, today enters into the temple as a babe and is met in the temple by the prophet Simeon who confesses him to be the Christ. Let us, brothers and sisters, open our hearts today and receive him in the flesh and confess him as the Savior of the world, our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, the incarnate God, walked upon the earth and desires to enter into our hearts. Let us reach out our arms today like the Simeon the prophet and embrace our Lord Jesus Christ and embrace him into our hearts and so find the true meaning of life and the meaning of death and the hope of everlasting life.